for the run. If they don't, it's a quick pass from their star quarterback that's deadly accurate in the quick game. Jackson Anthrop was in the backfield. We'll see him at tailback some, but primarily a slot. And that pass is incomplete and will leave third and three. This is a Purdue offense under Jeff Brown that has set the school record for completions, 382 now. That bests the numbers from 98 when a guy by the name of Drew Brees was a quarterback. Second in the Big Ten in passing yards, sixth in total yards. And no David Bell, their all-star receiver, no Milton Wright. So they're out there top two. If there's a go-to guy, it's number 30 Jackson Anthrop lined up right here in the backfield. He'll motion. They'll try to get him against the linebacker. With third down three, it's loud in Nashville. Incomplete. ACC pro. There's a flag. And Purdue will pick up the first down. Jerry Magalena is a white hat. Defense number 33. Stop foul. First down. Actually, really good coverage on the back end for Tennessee. Nowhere to go with the football for O'Connell. Late throw there. It's just a little too much on the jersey. From the Bruza there. Left hand got a little bit of the jersey. And the refs, although it took a minute, easy call. I feel like given Tennessee's offensive explosiveness, they lead the nation in scoring in the first quarter. This opening drive is key for Purdue. Tennessee averages 14 points in the first quarter. Purdue... Anthrop in motion. Here's Horvath. And he bruises his way forward. The 230-pound fullback picks up nine. Cole, that's a dude that's a football player. Oh, there's no doubt about it. Physicality. He can play H-back. He can line up as a fullback. You see him just playing traditional tailback running back here. Taking that zone play. And sometimes being just a little bit of a step slower on the zone play. Allows things to develop. And trust me, Forty's got no problem getting north and south, putting his head down. Fifth-year senior from Mishawaka, Indiana. Suffered a broken fibula against UConn. Missed some time, but came back and was just fine. Third down one. Tied in Durham as the H. Here's Horvath, and he muscles his way near the marker. Tennessee with great push late. Let's see the spot. Line judge says move the chain. Purdue first down. Still a nice play by Byron Young there. Left him unblocked to read that play. So he kind of had a dual assignment. He's going to run with the quarterback, play flat. If he kept it, comes down and takes Horvath there. Even though first down yard is nice job squeezing it back inside. Young's got an amazing story. We'll get to that later in this broadcast. I wasn't sure he'd be playing college football. Opening drive for Purdue. Here's Anthrop out of the backfield, and he gets stuck by Jeremy Banks. Picks up just a yard. Well, Tom, you mentioned starting left tackle Greg Long out for Purdue. That means Eric Miller, number 74, is going to be anchoring that left side for a right-handed quarterback. That's the blind side, and Purdue is a pass-happy offense. There'll be a lot of opportunity for Tennessee to test Eric Miller, who moved from the right side over to the left to replace Greg Long. Eighth in the country in passing, 127 in rushing for this Purdue offense. Empty backfield now. Here comes Anthrop, and they fake the handoff. O'Connell pressure, escapes the pocket, and takes a hit as he crosses midfield to pick up a five. He joked with us yesterday, he's not the most fleet of foot. But that was a key run for Purdue on the scramble. You know, you mentioned when he walked on to Purdue, he was the eighth quarterback. On roster out of nine, he said, I didn't even get any scout team reps. I was playing scout team wide receiver. That's amazing. Horvath again needs two, got none. Huge stop by Tennessee in what you would expect to be a high scoring game from a Tennessee perspective. Purdue will keep the offense on the field for this fourth and two. Yeah, I think this is a great call, kind of no man's land here. You have a good drive going that's milking a lot of clock. When you play Tennessee, you want to keep the ball out of their hands as much as possible. So Purdue rolling the dice here on fourth and short. Crowd standing for this fourth and two. Pressure coming up the middle. O'Connell to throw. Outright incomplete. Just a little bit wide and a huge missed opportunity for the Big Ten's most efficient passer. 
have your top two receivers out, sometimes the timing can be just a little off. See Brock Thompson here on a corner out. It's a high-low on the outside and just turns his body almost running out of it. Doesn't run with speed out of it, turns and waits for the ball, and that can be the difference of a few feet there from a completion to an incomplete on fourth down. And healthy legs could be the difference of running with speed out of that break and not. Thompson's been banged up for a while. He finally comes off the field. Here's a Tennessee offense which leads the country in plays per minute, points per minute, and points scored in the first quarter, led by Hendon Hooker, second in the country in passing efficiency. He was the second-string quarterback to start the season behind Michigan transfer Joe Milton. Never let that bother him, took over, and he has led Tennessee to great heights this season. They'll run it on first down and find plenty of space and a pickup of seven from Jabari Small. Alex Golish is the offensive coordinator, along with head coach Josh Heupel. Won a national championship as a quarterback at Oklahoma, and he loves this up-tempo offense. Hooker going deep, man. Coverage! Incomplete. Looking for Javante Payton. Boy, and a rare miss there by Hendon Hooker. He doesn't miss those very often. Javante Payton had a step on the outside. Those are the type of, of plays that Purdue wants because you notice the tempo slows down. Right, that first play, positive plays. Tennessee's really going to push the tempo. And with Purdue being so thin up front and on the back end, they need as much breathers as possible. Here's that cover zero look. Nobody on the back end. Hooker steps up. He's a great runner, and he picks up the first down, and that was a real concern for Brad Lambert. If we bring pressure and we're in man, the quarterback will have a chance to run. Yeah, and the issue for Brad Lambert, the defense coordinator for Purdue, is he had two spires on Hooker on that play as well. Going deep again. Caught! Touchdown, Tennessee, Cedric Tillman. Seventh consecutive. That's a recipe for this. Touchdown catch for Tillman. It did not take Tennessee long. Four play, 55 yard drive. Hooker's legs picked up the first down. His arm. Get no return for Purdue. Coming up tonight at 10:30 Eastern, 7:30 Pacific, right here on ESPN and the app. Wisconsin battles Arizona State in the SRS Distribution Las Vegas Bowl. Then tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, number 17 Wake Forest takes on Rutgers in the Tax Slayer Gator Bowl. What a season for Arizona State. A win tonight will give the Sun Devils the first nine-win season since 2014. We've seen so many teams in college football, these two included, kind of tossed by the wayside, low expectations, outperform. Purdue certainly did that with a pair of top five wins. And Tennessee did it after missing so many players to the portal. O'Connell Roll is going to let go deep, wide open. A Purdue first down and more for Brock Thompson. On the U-turn on lower Broadway. He is in. Touchdown, Purdue. 75 yards. and limped off the field the last time they went to him. No limping on this one. Just an absolute dime by O'Connell. And so much for a quick passing game, short passing game oriented offense. Purdue has come out pushing the ball downfield. 24th passing touchdown of the season for O'Connell. Mitchell Finneran for the point after. And he sneaks it through after missing one against Indiana last time out. Aiden O'Connell with plenty of air underneath this one. That watch.
watch how the sprint out really affects the play side safety. You're going to see O'Connell go this way. It's going to affect this safety. He's going to get his eyes on the receiver to that side, and that's what opens up the backside post. Look at O'Connell work his eyes. Safety stays there, bites up, and nobody is back home for the touchdown there. And a nice shake by Thompson. He transferred in from Marshall. He comes from an athletic family. And can we just remind everybody what the coaching staff said about Thompson yesterday? That he's going to need two knee surgeries yeah. after the season? I mean, he is not 100% out there looking like he's 100%. That's a bowl game, I tell you what. There's no pain, no old injuries. It's your last hurrah for this season. You leave it all out on the field. Two touchdowns in the last 13 seconds in the Transperfect Music City Bowl. Kick it off after Purdue tied it with just one play. They have the school record for scoring set in 1993 when Heath Schuler was a signal caller. And a pickup of six on first down by Jabari Small. The explosiveness in the offense can be measured at first quarter points alone. Here's Small on the swing pass. In fact, in conference games this year, Tennessee had back-to-back 28-point -back first quarters against Missouri and South Carolina, respectively, for the first time in modern program history. It dates back to 1944. On the ground again. And it's small. And the head linesman has him short. The side judge has him good. And the spot's going to be up. short by a foot. Yeah. At one spot, gave it to him. Another spot came in and said no. Offense will have a little sugar huddle looking at a fourth and short. You go right back to small. Going to see 12 of 25 on fourth down this season. I would. A little zone read. You also have an athletic quarterback that can keep it if the look's there. Yeah, tight end Jacob Warren tapped out there as well. Looks like he got rolled up on lower extremity issues or had to make a substitution at tight end here in a short yardage situation. Purdue does not have much depth on the defensive side of the ball. And that's Jalen Alexander who told us yesterday this will be his final game as a Boilermaker. He'll be headed off to the NFL next and get in shape for the draft. And here's a guy that came in with 94 tackles on the season. Made an immediate impact starting as a true freshman. In fact, his first practice with Purdue four years ago, they had some depth issues leading into that first practice. First rep. He ran with the first team at linebacker, and he said, you know, didn't take long to figure out I could handle this. Tennessee will punt it away after the discussion in a quick UT timeout. People prefer men's sports because we're better athletes. Son, we're grabbing burgers for dinner if you're interested. Uh, I'm vegan, Walter. You had bacon for breakfast. Okay, Mr. Perfect. Want to really be a rebel? Get off your parents' car insurance. Pardon me, time out for injury. Anthrop, a great returner. Great hang time from Paxton Brooks. And Anthrop will take a fair catch up for a 48-yard punt. 
you mentioned Purdue's two wins against top five opponents at Iowa and home against Michigan State. Aiden O'Connell with magnificent vote. Mind you, I'm going to keep reminding you, he was the fourth entering this season on the depth chart, eighth when he walked on at Purdue. Just casually upsetting top five teams, putting up astronomical numbers. Pretty special college football story for Aiden O'Connell. One of six kids, his younger brother Patrick on the D-line at Wheaton, Division Three school where O'Connell originally committed as King Doru gets his first carry and picks up three. It was interesting talking with Brom yesterday. He referenced the fact that they don't run it much and they don't run it necessarily efficiently. So his key, he said, I don't necessarily keep track of it, but in my mind, I figure if we can get between 60 and 100 yards out of the ground game, that's enough to keep the defense honest and open up the passing game. Yeah, at least get them thinking, right? Get those linebackers to pay attention when that ball gets in the mesh on those RPOs to open up the pass game. They have been run heavy in this game, especially relative to their history. And that's a nice physical run by Doru. They've run more than they've passed so far through the first 12 plays. And now looking at a third and a long two. Halfway through the first quarter nearly. O'Connell pulls it back and it goes down. A loss of five on the sack by Caleb Tremblay. Yeah, trying to work a quick slant to the field to Jackson Anthrop. Linebacker gets right in the window. You can see him working left. It's not there. Works back to the middle and time ran out for O'Connell. That's the thing, when it's a quick game call, that ball has got to come out because the offensive linemen are expect one, two, three, ball out. They're only expecting the block for about a second and a half, maybe two seconds. So if that ball gets held in that quick game, more often than not, that's going to happen. Bayless Jones Jr., one of the nation's best punt returners back for Tennessee, a low kick. He'll catch it on the hop and get dropped. Great coverage by Purdue after a 40-yard punt. Tennessee will have the ball when we return. Hooker with a 41-yard touchdown pass to Cedric Tillman. Fifth play of the game for the Volunteers, and they will run it again. Pardon me, the eighth play of the game. Third possession. Picks up a couple. Cole, you had a chat with Alex Golish, Tennessee offensive coordinator, before the game. What did he say about getting Hendon Hooker in the right frame of mind? He said he wanted to get him comfortable. Easy, high percentage throws early to get him feeling good and then maybe take their shots. Here's a shot down the sideline, wide open. It's Tillman again. Touchdown, Tennessee. There is a flag on the play that might take this 61-yarder off the board. Number seven, penalty for five. He's on the play. Touchdown. What a start for this Tennessee offense playing to the same script. Tillman has two catches for 102 yards and a pair of scores. Boy, and it's the things that we've been talking about, the tempo and the spacing that are really messing with Purdue right now. Once again, a little late getting lined up there led to the confusion and led to Tillman running right by his defender. It's a Purdue team decimated in the defensive backfield especially. They've had to move guys around. They've got safeties playing corner, linebackers playing nickelback. Right, watch the spacing that Tennessee uses here in conjunction with the tempo. There's two guys out here. There's only one defender. Watch the defender run out there late. All right, the tempo, he identifies it late. And when you have a stack coverage there, there's a little confusion about who has who. The hesitation, can't hesitate when Cedric Tillman is running full speed downfield. 
I spoke to Tennessee wide receiver coach Cody Burns about Cedric Tillman before the game. Just said it's remarkable that this young man had no offers coming out of high school. That basically he was just offered to walk on at Southern California, and here he is, one of the best receivers in the SEC. And Cody looked at me and said, "I know two star, right?" He said, "What do you have? Six, eight catches in three years before we got here?" He said, "But the guy continued to put his work in, believed in the new system, bought in very early to this new system. All has led to his success for Tennessee this fall." It's his fourth consecutive 100-yard game, and it's come on just two catches today. I'd say that's pretty good. Cody did add that they wanted to get him a grand today. I think he's knocked that out there Oh, he's quick. got it. Yeah, he only needed 69 to get it. He got it. Nice. Tennessee has run nine plays. Volunteers have scored 14. I heard that. kick another fair catch taken this season along with their contributions to university's general scholarship funds for every field goal and extra point made all state also donated to the american red cross to help with disaster relief efforts thank you all state not far from where many of those devastating tornadoes came through a couple of weeks ago western tennessee and western kentucky especially here in the mid-state, the Transperfect Music City Bowl in Nashville. Aiden O'Connell back at it for Purdue. Not only did O'Connell come in as the eighth quarterback on the roster, he didn't even start in high school until his senior year. Flea Flicker going to unload, and he goes to a crossing route for another first down. It's Brock Thompson again, who finally goes down at the 41. 33 yards. You know what's interesting about these flea flickers is you usually think you're trying to fool the safeties. Not always. Those guys are tough to fool. You're really trying to fool these linebackers. See those linebackers suck up? That's what opens up that deep over, that crossing route. It's not always about hitting the home run. It's about hitting that chunk play. 15, 20 yards in the middle of the field when you affect those linebackers with the handoff. O'Connell, pump, go, and a hold that was seen in another pass interference. It's been Kamal Haddon. You talked about it earlier, but Aiden O'Connell with his pump Holding fake. Defense, number 13. Ten-yard penalty. Is really effective in, as we discussed yesterday, it's because he has long fingers. He's got huge hands, and that really helps when you're whipping that ball through the motion, trying for a little hitch and go on the outside, and when you're beat as a corner, honestly, that's the best thing you can do sometimes. But watch how that ball goes almost through his entire throwing motion. That time was even a little abbreviated to what it usually is. But my hands were big, not as big as his. So I couldn't have done that. I was more of a shoulder pump kind of guy. Out of the pistol now, a play fake, going deep again. Overthrow, interception. Hatton comes back from the pass interference penalty to haul in his first pick of the season. Smokey's not impressed. Everybody in orange is, though. Again, with your best two receivers out, some of these routes you're not used to throwing to guys like T.J. Sheffield. A little bit of holding there. Got away with it. That ball needs to be thrown towards the back left pylon, not up the field. Little mistake there by O'Connell. Had a play if he would have led Sheffield out of that one. But either way, great play on the back end by Haddon. O'Connell got a bump, went down. Haddon seeing more playing time in this game with Brandon Turnage out for Tennessee and taking advantage for his turnover of this game. Volunteers have scored 14 points on nine plays. Hooker chased. And the Virginia Tech transfer picks up six yards. What an impressive young man ahead. And Hooker comes from an athletic family. His dad, a great quarterback at North Carolina A&T. And he grew up in Greensboro. Unloads on the sideline again. A little underthrown. It will go. For a first down instead of a touchdown, which was possible. It's a first for Jalen Hyatt. Here comes a tempo. Boy, we saw the stack formation lead to the touchdown for Cedric Tillman. That time a little bunch on the outside. 
Those bunches and stacks really causing communication issues for Purdue as another receiver is wide open. Brad Lambert is the defensive coordinator for Purdue, one of three by title. And Lambert admitted as much to us both yesterday and before the game today. They are so thin in all the wrong spots against this high-scoring Tennessee offense. Here's Fant, the tight end. First target, and he picks up five. Yeah, so what can Purdue do without so many key players in the secondary? Well, it's tough, right? I mean, you're not going to hold up on the back end with safeties playing corner and an outside linebacker playing nickel. You're just not going to do it. So you got to get pressure on Hendon Hooker and force the ball out early. Over the middle, that's complete to Javante Payton. And Tennessee has it in the red zone after a 24-yard completion. But you're right, Tom. It's going to be tough because you said it. Purdue is thin in all the wrong places, just like you. Hey, the Peloton's paying off. Sabari Small picks up this one. Hooker's efficiency was almost as impressive as your one-liners coming into this, but the chunks that they're picking up in this game, he's averaging 27 yards per completion. Yeah, everything working now. Slow it down a little bit here in the red zone. Seventh play of this drive. Hooker looking in zone. Will take off and throw on the run to high. Land. It's actually a great second reaction on the outside for Javante Payton. And Hooker just airmailed that one at his receiver for a touchdown. But you know what? For the bombs he's thrown today, we'll, we'll give him a miss every now and then. Tennessee doesn't usually have play uh, drives that last up to 10 plays. Hooker looking in zone. Fires. Incomplete. And a flag on the play. And he'll be pass interference, a fresh set of downs. Cole talking to Alex Golish about calling this offense. And he said, I got a number in my head. When I get to nine plays. Pass interference, defense number six. The foul occurred in the end zone. First down at the two yard line. When I get to nine plays, I got to end the drive. And you don't often hear OCs talking like that. Well, and he gets usually told to end the drives by offensive line coach Glenn Ellerby, who also spoke to it about it before the game. And that communication goes back and forth when a drive does get up around, like you said, eight, nine, ten plays. I've never heard it, guys. I've never heard of an O-line coach that will get in the ear of his OC and say, end it. Either go to the end zone, decide to kick the field goal, do what you got to do. Take a chance. We have to end this drive. And I asked Coach Ellerby, what are your signifiers for that? What are you looking for? What signals that that needs to happen? He's like, you played the position, man. You know when those big boys are tired. When I see the belly sticking out a little bit more, <laughs> when I see the hands on the hips, the guys are bent over, we need to end it. We can't continue to put our old linemen through those kind of drives. It's a heck of a tempo that they play at. First and goal, straight ahead. Touchdown, Tennessee on the ground, Jabari Small. A great hat level up front for Tennessee. Cole was just talking about the O-line. This offense, the tempo is the toughest on the O-line, so when they get in the red zone like that, you notice how they took their time on that last play. Yeah. Knowing it was going to be a run, give those offensive linemen three or four extra seconds, catch your breath so they can fire off, get some push, and you can punch it in for six. Jackson Anthrop from West Lafayette out of Central Catholic comes from a Purdue family. He's playing in his final game as a Boilermaker. That was his first catch, second touch today. No space there to work in the quick game and really hasn't been much of this first half. Talking to Tim Banks, defensive coordinator for Tennessee, he mentioned, I want my DBs to play up in the face of these receivers. I don't want to give them the cushion to dink and dunk us down the field. Second and 13, O'Connell gets rid of it quickly. That's good for a Purdue first down. Anthrop dances his way past midfield. On this time. Perfect play call. Purdue catches Tennessee in a cover three look. What do you do, cover three? Attack the seams. Seam route there by Jackson Anthrop and great timing by O'Connor. Little late rotation cornerbacks rolled off into cover three, and that's one of the weak spots. You want to hit those seam routes. 
Here's Horvath. And he barrels his way through a hole, made it bigger, picked up seven. Doesn't he just remind you of every high school running back you ever were on a team, ever shared the field with? I mean, he's just a bruiser. I think every one of them had the same face mask, too. That's right. Armbands, huge biceps. I mean, it's not the fastest guy, not the most athletic, but I tell you what, nobody runs harder. Came back from the broken fibula against Nebraska in one of the first opportunities. He hurdled. A Nebraska player. That was in his second carry of the game. So, yeah, I guess the leg's fine. Tennessee brings pressure, and it's incomplete. And another flag on the volunteer secondary. This will be on Warren Burrell. Aiden O'Connell taking full advantage when he gets man coverage. Pass interference, defense number four. 15 yard penalty, first down. See, just you got to be able to find the football, and you can see Burles is really trying to look to the inside. That ball is a little more upfield. It's that last push, right? That last push is I think he's trying to wheel around to the other side. A little too physical at the point of attack. Thompson transferred from Marshall, wanted to get closer to home where his younger brother Cade was battling osteosarcoma. Cade, a cancer survivor. And a family full of athletes, brother. Played hoops at Ohio State. This is a first catch for Payne Durham, the tight end. Picked up nine. Boy, Payne Durham means a lot to this offense. They use him in pass protection, run blocking. You see him there catching the ball. Just a little insert, which he would normally have in the run game, but squeezes it out, able to find some space, catch a football. Got into football a little bit later in his life. He grew up playing lacrosse. Didn't play football until a little bit later in high school, but a big part of why this Purdue offense has been successful this season. From Sewanee, Georgia, he was an elite lacrosse player. But then when he showed up on campus, they nearly moved him to tackle. Horvath gets taken down right at the line of scrimmage. Payne Durham came in at 275 pounds, and the coaches started saying, you know, you might have a fit on the offensive line. I would think that'd be pretty good motivation for a guy who wanted to catch passes. You think? <laughs> Not many things that'll make you stop eating. Then a coach saying, you want to go block people on every note? <laughs> Had a great game against Oregon State, 120 yards and a pair of touchdowns. Third and two for Purdue. They converted only one of three third downs today. To Anthrop, caught, first down. points combined in this first quarter. We expected Tennessee to put a first and 10 Purdue from the 15. Horvath trying to stretch it. And he cuts back inside. This is a very deliberate Purdue offense, but it's worked. I feel like they've done a really good job of mixing in different run schemes. Also on the pass game, it's been RPOs. It's been play action, moving the pocket. Right now, Jeff Brom is doing a great job working with less than an ideal situation, especially out of receiver for Purdue. Brock Thompson's been their leading receiver. He's already got a 100-yard game. And Horvath. Averaging four and a half yards per carry, doing his best Mike Allstott impersonation. It's an Anthrop in motion here. Anthrop wants to throw. Lob in zone. Out of bounds, incomplete. We knew something was coming. Jeff Brom kind of had a twinkle in his eye when we asked him about some trick plays. Yeah, usually when Anthrop's in motion, something's going to happen. Here's the problem. It's a really tough one to run to the short side. Right, for Anthrop, he's got to catch the ball, grab the laces, find the receiver. It all happens really fast. You'd love to run that to the field or from the middle just to give that route a little more space to run and Anthrop a little more time to throw the football. Third down two. Play action. O'Connell in zone. Overthrow the tight end, Garrett Miller. O'Connell, for all of his conceit, you think of these two programs, it makes sense that these two signal callers would be top of mind. How about that face mask Drew's got? You like it? They don't make those anymore. <laughs> Hooker up play action, got man coverage again. And it's caught by 
Tillman got thrown down late and a flag. Remember that helmet Peyton used to have too? It's like the first generation of, I forget they were called, like the Revolution helmets or something. It looked like a space helmet. Yeah, it looked like the Martian. Foul, yeah. Unnecessary roughness, defense, number four. 15 yard penalty, first down. Marvin Grant, flag for unnecessary roughness. I don't know, I think Purdue, I think Vinny Sullivan. Fair. Can't afford to give Tennessee free yardage. Oh, small got rung up on the direct snap, and he picks up four. Great job by Cam Allen filling the hole here. He's at safety right there. <laughs> Tennessee he, trying to catch him off guard. Yeah, you like the hooker fake? Great sell. Now he dials a fastball just a little bit high to Tillman. I don't know. I've seen a few of these lately. We got a flag on the play again where the quarterback looks at the sideline, fakes like there's communication. I, I haven't seen many of them work. No, they usually don't. I think uh, is it back in the playoffs or national championship, I think Alabama did it. Or it Tua did, did looked at the side at 19. Yeah. LS uh, oh, LSU. That's right. A little chippy now. Personal foul on the seven roughness. Offense number 75. 15 yard penalty. First down. That's Jerome Carvin at left guard. We call it a little bit late to this, but this is a Tennessee offensive line that's uh, undermanned as well in this game. It's just a little bit different. Kate Mays with an ankle injury that he hurt a couple of weeks ago, just not quite yet ready to go. And he'll have a decision to make after this game if he's going to return to Tennessee or enter the NFL draft. Some grades that you hear or see around mid third round for Cade Mays, but Dane Davis filling in nicely, mixing it up a little bit with Kingston Harris at right tackle there. So a yo-yo back to the other side of the 50, and now second and 22. Hooker to the sideline through the hands of Princeton Fan. Now third and 22. It's three balls for Hooker. This is normally where you would just turn number five loose. Four man rush, Hooker lets it fly, nobody there. And Tennessee will be forced to punt. Huge stop for Purdue after they had to settle for a field goal in the previous possession. tough part about this offense right it doesn't operate as well if you're not in tempo right so a couple incompletions early now you're out of your tempo game and it's just there's something about the confidence with this team when they get to go fast so that's why you like positive but a bunch of new firsts after some long last for this Purdue program O'Connell to the slant Catch made by Brock Thompson. I knew Brock Thompson would be on uh, Cole's radar. Not only he's a tough guy who's playing hurt, but comes from that athletic family. Cole's a Yankees fan. Brock's dad, Ryan, spent 10 years in the big leagues, including the 2000 Yankees. Guys like Jeter, Bernie, Paul O'Neill, and oh, yeah, Pettit and Clements. A decent lineup. Their closer was pretty good. Not bad. And here's King Doru picks up four in a first down. Just remarkable what you said about him earlier that Coach Braun shared with us that both knees are going to need to be operated on. He said he practices one day a week, and they just kind of allow him to get out there, get a feel for what the offense is going to look like, what they're going to need him to do, and then they want to try to get him healthy to be able to contribute, and he's done that today. Doing it on bad wheels. O'Connell over the middle. And throw with great hands in a Purdue first down. What a strike. To the six-year senior. I mean, this ball had to be perfect 
You see Trayvon Flowers suck up at first, and then he makes a great line to make a play on that, but the ball is just perfect from O'Connell to Anthrop. O'Connell turned down Division Three Wheaton Jackson Anthrop, turned down NAIA Marlin. Purdue was his only Division I offer, and the product had a Central Catholic in West Lafayette decided to stay home where his brother played football, another brother played hoops, and his dad was on the Final Four team for Purdue in 1980. Doru muscles his way to a nine-yard gain. We talked about this Purdue offense getting ready for this game, and it's almost like it takes on a new identity every game. And Cole, Jeff Brown even talked about that, figuring it out as the game goes along. Yeah, cause I asked him, I said, what's the foundation of your offense? It's hard to find what they truly build upon because it seems to be different every week. And he said, listen, we usually go out there, we'll give Aiden a couple high percentage throws, and we got to figure it out from there, just see where the game takes us. And second and one, Doru, another first down. Right there is interesting, the, the rushing attack, and I think the run has been opened up by the pass, but interestingly enough, the majority of the big passes we've seen Purdue hit today have been off of some sort of RPO or play action. Guys, this team is last in FBS in yards per rush, 2.8. The fact that the play action and RPO game is that effective is just remarkable. Well, the run game has been much better, especially on this drive, into the end zone, Thompson. And no flag coverage by Burrell. Thompson slipped off the playing surface. And you just wonder at what point that Tim Banks, the defensive coordinator for Tennessee, starts to get a little impatient with some of the time that O'Connell has to throw the football that time, bringing a little cover zero type pressure off the edge to try to force the issue. I think we're going to see these corners for Tennessee playing up tighter than these receivers, and I think we're going to see the pressure dial up a little bit here on normal downs. Maybe not as much here in the red zone. O'Connell maybe got short-armed on that one with pressure in the pocket and left it to Durham's feet. Third 10 coming up. Had to bring the little late linebacker blitz here from the left side. That's the pressure from Aaron Beasley that O'Connell felt to the inaccurate early throw. Purdue 2 of 5 on third down in this one. We'll bring Dolru to the backfield. in his quarterback you got a wide receiver less than 100 percent trying to throw it to where he's going to be yeah it's really tough and, and thompson slips here on that dig route a little dagger concept you have a seam taking the safety out with a dig right behind it on the outside would have been open but thompson lost his footing we we're down there earlier footing not great here on this playing field starting to get torn up just a little bit 35 yard attempt for mitchell finneran and he gets it through traffic his second Cole Mitchell Fenner in two for two today. Yeah, an interesting journey. You brought up uh, one player that had a little bit of a baseball background. Mitchell Fenner has that too. He was the backyard wiffle ball catcher for Chris Hatcher, Samford head football coach. When he was coaching at Valdosta State, that's how Mitchell got to know Chris Hatcher. His only offer coming out of high school was Samford University. And Coach Hatcher went to school with his mom, Caroline, or Christine, excuse me, there at Valdosta State, where Chris Hatcher was an amazing player and then obviously became the offensive coordinator and then transferred up to Purdue having success kicking this year as well. Did you guys use a catcher? In I was ball? just going to say, you don't use a catcher. I mean, maybe like when I was young in the backyard, oh, you, you, but you use the square. Yeah, take, you gotta take the, the fence or put the net up or whatever it might be. There's no way on your yard. you could catch one of those, right? Those corkscrews, the, the risers. I mean, those, those wiffle balls that go all over the place. But hey, whatever it takes to get a scholarship nowadays, huh? I like to tell people I was a pitcher once in the NBA. <laughs> you, you were. People ask, do they have that? No. Catcher and wiffle ball, huh? Bayless Jones from a yard deep. Do you 
whole coaching family is a tight one, and you got resources all over the place that you're trying to dig into. Tennessee, last drive, couldn't get in rhythm, couldn't get the tempo going. I think we expect to see a lot faster pace for this drive here. Second and six now. Hooker gets pressured, steps away, and will try to scramble. Hit from behind, but picks up the first down, and I expect the tempo to pick up. Yeah, here on third down. Now they pick up the first down, so yeah, you're going to see them get lightning fast here. Snap the ball, try to get Purdue out of position. 13 seconds between plays. Jalen Wright picks up three. 13 seconds. You notice when it's a bigger chunk play, they'll go faster with the tempo. When something gets stymied a little bit, they'll slow it down a hair, and there's a Purdue guy down on the field right now. That's Alexander. Jalen Alexander, the senior, in his final game for Purdue, tended to. For Is tempo harder to run after a big QB run? A little bit. I mean, as a quarterback, you've got to be prepared. You're going to be tired. You're going to be huffing and puffing after a scramble like that. But you got to get lined up and get the ball snapped as quickly as possible. Probably would prefer a handoff. Instead, they go play action. And he's able to find his tight end. And Princeton fans' first catch gives him eight yards. And talking to Brad Lambert, deep to coordinator for Purdue, I asked him, how do you even simulate this tempo? Because it's so fast. He said, well, had my defense turn their back to the offense. Let the offense get aligned, and then I tell them when they could turn around, they'd snap the ball. That's as best we could do to try to simulate how fast Tennessee goes. Incomplete. It leaves a third and two. And Cole, it was also different for guys who grew up learning to finish their blocks. But Josh Heupel is basically instructed Alex Golish that we, your guys don't have to finish blocks. They have to just get ready. Well, it, it's it's so complicated sometimes when you're going fast because you want to see an offensive line finish. I think this group does it better than any tempo offense I've ever seen. A third and two straight ahead. And a first down carry for Jalen Wright. What makes it so difficult from the O-line perspective? Well, here's what I see oftentimes with offenses that go fast is the offensive line just engages. So it's basically lock horns, a second, two seconds, and then they're trying to track the football down. They're trying to find the football because that's the way that they practice it. Back to the ground game. So if your emphasis, Tom, in practice is finding the football to line up as quickly as possible for the next play, well, that's how you're going to act in a game. This Tennessee offensive line doesn't necessarily operate that way. Glenn Edelby's done an amazing job of still keeping that finish and keeping that effort go through the whistle. Flag on the play. Hooker tripped up and just passed the line of scrimmage in a pickup of two. And in addition to that, we're seeing the drive continue. This will be the ninth play coming up, which was a, a very interesting discussion point with Golish. Yeah, what, what was the play? He said, on play formation, eight. offense, five players in the backfield. Yard, procedural yard, issue there, but on play eight, out. my old line coach, Golish said, gets in my ears, says, hey, we got to end this drive. And what do we see right there? Hitch and goes on the outside, trying to take a shot, trying to end the drive, because the longer it goes on, the more tired those offensive linemen get, and that's what has really been the issue for the sacks and pressures they've given up. So it's no longer great pride to say, man, we, we manhandled them for a 12, 13, 15 play drive that works against what Tennessee is trying to accomplish. Yeah, I mean, most offenses back when I played pro style, you wanted those drives. You loved those drives. Now it's like, man, that's we got to get off the field. We got to get some points on the board, take some shots. A little option look on second and 12. And Hooker fights his way through for a few extra, picks up eight. Hennon Hooker isn't just a willing runner, he's a good runner. Sharing words with Jalen Alexander. Hooker is just, he's special, right? His ability to hit the big plays, protect the football, his athletic ability that he adds to it is such a wrinkle that makes it difficult on defense, especially in third and short, third and medium situations like right here. He averages four yards a carry on the season. To throw. Open for a minute, but incomplete. Bayless Jones had to turn around for it. 
taking a shot there and it looks like they'll keep the offense on the field for fourth down and i think you're kind of seeing the effects of a few runs on this drive for hooker because bayless jones has his man beat completely that ball is going to be thrown upfield in the end zone and it's a touchdown a little bit on the back shoulder for bayless led to the incompletion big mark on the right shoulder of hendon hooker took a hit on one of those runs you wonder if that's affecting him a little bit it would have been a 50-yard attempt from here and another Tennessee penalty. Full start offense on 88. Five-yard penalty. Down. Hooker thought there was movement on the right side from Lawrence Johnson. And look at those grass stains on that right shoulder. A couple really good physical runs for him in this drive. And sometimes it's it leads to a few inaccurate throws every now and then when you're putting your shoulder down and running guys over. And then Hooker isn't just a great football player he's also a fan of the game mentioned his dad played he's like man i sit down and watch youtubes i'll, I'll go to anybody steve mcnair randall cunningham cordell stewart go to mckenzie milton drew lock who played for hyper now looking at a fourth and nine well the only thing that would make you be quiet as a baby when you were crying was your dad's film i guess that's how it works play clock at two hooker pressure let's it go Nobody there. It was well behind Cedric Tillman. And Tennant up. O'Connell, 9 of 18. Here's Horvath, and he gets taken down immediately. No gain. Aaron Beasley, the stop for Tennessee. Now this Tennessee defensive front has been so disruptive all year. So many tackles for loss. Creating havoc in the backfield. Haven't really been able to get things going. They're playing well on the outside, but looking for this front four to start getting some pressure up the middle on O'Connell. There's Horvath now. And he motors his way for a nice game. And just got pushed around on this one. That's just a little inside zone, a little double team there. And Jaquan Blakely push up front by this Purdue offensive line and, and honestly watching film I didn't expect that didn't expect that coming to this game that Purdue would have the success that they have running the football between the tackles especially with the changes Eric Miller left tackle usually played right Spencer Holstage in there Tyler Witt and right guard and Camp Craig getting a chance to start at right tackle Tennessee drops seven and that's incomplete trying to find Payne Durham Great coverage by Jalen McCullough. He's going to get to this route right as the ball arrives. Just a stick route from the tight end. Payne Durham and McCullough all over that one. Great job also. When it's an outbreaking route like that, as a corner, sometimes it's tough not to go through the receiver, and that leads to the penalties. Kept his body off him, got his hand in there to break it up. Fourth and four. Wonder if Purdue will get creative. I've seen one trick play so far tonight. Fair catch taken. We'll be back in 10 seconds after a message from Ally. They're in one on one coverage if they want it. The count is a pass to Bayless Jones, and Jones takes it out to the 19. By the way, the 1981 bowl game for Tennessee was the Garden State Bowl. Imagine how chilly it was that day. Straight ahead. And a pickup of five for Jabari Small. Here comes Tempo for Tennessee. We talked about the running backs of Tennessee lost to the transfer portal. Starting at various spots, Oklahoma, North Carolina, Hooker. Looking. Got two receivers in the same area. And that one's incomplete. The Tennessee running game has been really impressive given what they came into the season with. I really think it's the added element of Hendon Hooker and not just as a runner, but his ability to be accurate and dangerous throwing the football. You have to respect that. You have to play with safeties, two safeties at a time. You can't just roll down in the box and leave one on one matchup. So it's all complimentary with this offense. The quick strike ability, stretching the field vertical opens up the run game and run game opens up the RPO in the pass as well. Anthrop as for a fair catch. He'll take it there at 336. Tennessee up 21 to 13. This is uh, 
an offense that we expected to see a performance from Tennessee. Tom Howard, Jordan Rise to get as much rest as possible. 36 plays for Purdue. They've run it 15 times. Got out their average. O'Connell completes to the sideline and a pickup of 13. There's Sheffield. Just down the road, Thompson Station, Tennessee, out of Independence High School. Sheffield affected by David Bell and Milton Wright being out. He's normally a slot guy playing much more on the outside today because of those opt-outs and injuries that Purdue's dealing with. Back to the run game. Wow, look at Horvath. Pick up a seven. Horvath came in as a walk-on. In the spring game after his freshman year, everybody was hurt, so he played both sides. He played 103 snaps in the spring game. There's an opportunity to make an impression. There's an opportunity to not get out of bed for three or four <laughs> days. Take an ice <laughs> bath. Unbelievable. Horvath again. Well, Purdue, back in the day, had one of the most impressive fullbacks in the game, Mike Allstott. Had the Big Ten in rushing. Horvath. Physically cut from the same mold, 6'3", 230. Now you see why he's a finalist for that low man trophy. PFT Big Cat going to get that thing out Monday afternoon. Would not be surprised to see him take it home. Wait, hold on. What's the low man trophy? That's the best fullback in college football. O'Connell going deep. Is caught out of the two-yard line. T.J. Sheffield will set Purdue up with a first and goal after a 38-yard grab. Well, we mentioned O'Connell is the most accurate deep thrower in all football completing just under 60 percent of his passes 25 plus downfield and that's why coverage over the top throw a back shoulder ball allow Sheffield to have vision on it turn his shoulders that's how you get completions on those deep throws and he took a hit as he let that one go too downing the lead blocker for Horvath who will shove his way towards the goal line and they stop his forward progress at the one he also had a true freshman corner there with no Alante Taylor in the game for Tennessee. There's just a pile of white jerseys now behind the line of scrimmage. You think Horvath wants it again? Yeah, I think he wants that tire with the duct tape Chevy logo on it to take that trophy home. <laughs> He's a great receiver out of the backfield. Belies his look. Second and goal. Got Anthrop in the slot. Here he is again. The bruiser gets hit behind the line and dragged down. Eight different Tennessee signal callers on their sideline were all the way out on the field. They'll move the pocket. O'Connell looking. Pressure! Taken down! Jeremy Banks with the sack. Tennessee uses another timeout. They want their defense to get their offense back on the field. It's a loss of 11. Yeah, you want to get your quarterback out of the pocket in a situation like this. The tough part is you're on the right half, so you got a right-handed quarterback going left. You see, it's just it's more difficult to get rid of the ball when you're under pressure like that. He was trying to find Jackson Anthrop, but the coverage was great on the outside. And a huge stop for Tennessee. I'm going to tell you, Jeremy Banks is playing like he has been shot out of a cannon this afternoon, flying around the field. Product from just down the road in Cordova, Tennessee, outside of Memphis. Former running back made the switch a couple of seasons ago. This Tennessee defense has held Purdue to a pair of field goals in the red zone today. There's a third trip for the Boilermakers into the red zone, and they'll line up another one. And the struggles continue, right? I mean, this has kind of been their MO all year. One of the worst in the country at scoring touchdowns in the red zone. The run game has been the issue. When you saw when they get down there in condensed environments inside the five, that's just not where they want to live and where they're best as an offense. 30-yard attempt for Mitchell Finner in the Samford transfer and the former wiffle ball catcher. He's already hit from 24 and 35. Officially 29. 
And he will bang it through again. Finneran, three for three in this one. With Tennessee leading by five. Hey, we got a trophy in the building. We got a couple, I suppose. The Progressive Bowl Challenge Cup is right here at the Transperfect Music City Bowl. Be awarded to the conference that has the highest winning percentage in the postseason once it is complete. But the American off to a 3-0 start with one bowl game remaining. Big Ten 2-0, still eight remaining. Busy day for the Big Ten tomorrow. I just want to see him get played. Yeah. Did I ask him for much? And today, today's landscape, yeah. It's, there are a lot of, it's interesting, there are a lot of rumors swirling around the Purdue program yesterday. They got their COVID test back, and they did have a couple of guys missing in this one, including Branson Dean, out for health and safety protocols. I never got the feeling, we didn't, we didn't ask Brom this specifically, but they just never got the feeling that Purdue was the type of program that was going to say, no, we'll wave the white flag and just go home. Certainly thin in the secondary. This is a big return for Tennessee after a couple of timeouts used defensively. Volunteers have 57 seconds left in the half. It was Freehill, the kicker, in on the tackle. Yeah, 57 seconds and a timeout. Purdue started with the football, so Tennessee's got a great opportunity here to double up. They can get some points on the board here before half. One timeout remaining for Josh Heupel's squad here in the half. Their quarterback, Hendon Hooker, is thrown for 188 and two touchdowns. Touchdown passes were long ones. Hooker pressured, slings it out complete to Bayless Jones. He can't quite get out of bounds, and they'll run the clock. 46 and rolling. And an injured player will stop the clock. And it's a Purdue player. This is Jalen Graham. A junior from Detroit out of Cass Tech. And that stops the clock. And an advantage for Tennessee with 44 seconds remaining. It's a big advantage because Graham essentially acts as their nickelback while they're in base defense. Brad Lambert told us we probably won't play nickel today. We don't have the, the numbers in the back end to be able to do it, but because Graham's on the field, we feel okay being able to operate that way. And part of it is the, clock, the game clock will start. Tennessee obviously snap. declined the runoff with the ball, but the problem is, as he mentioned, that Tennessee with its tempo doesn't allow you to sub, so we'd rather have as many regulars out there as possible instead of moving other guys in and out. And now they are forced to go to a true nickel. Chris Jefferson, number 17, out there over the slot. So just two linebackers in the game. He's probably fine in this scenario, right? 44 seconds left. Tennessee's not going to run the football. They're going to try to pick up a few chunks through the air to get in the field goal range or strike from deep. Second down, 10. Pocket holds, Hooker unloads, nobody there. Jalen Hyatt, and we're going to flag afterwards. Davis having to be helped up, Love pushing and shoving in the backfield. Looked like Hyatt stopped his route, miscommunication on the pass, and then a flag afterwards on Lawrence Johnson. Already one unsportsmanlike on Purdue in this half. Oh, we saw the, what was it, the pro fighting league truck down there That's in the right. dock? I mean, there was, there was some WWE moves going on down there. Some of the Purdue entertainment was, uh, they brought in some professional wrestling, one of That's the hotel right. ballrooms. I got to be honest with you. If I was at a bowl game as a college football player and you brought pro wrestling to us, that would have gone poorly. You would have gotten in the ring. Somehow, some way, yeah, I would have been a part of that. You know all those big boys want to get out there, throw the spandex on, let your hair down. Spandex part probably They're not. only on the field after their play. They're all sending personal fouls on each team, offense and defense. The down counts, third down. This is after the ball had already 
Fall and incomplete. Lawrence Johnson in on it for Purdue. Big number 90 right in the middle. Uh, uh, pardon me, out on the edge now. Uh, it's going to be right over here. I like the offsetting there. Was... Purdue finished it, but Tennessee did their part as well. Third and ten. Hooker has a hit out of his hand. Falls on the grass, and Purdue scrambling for it. Boilermakers have it. With a slant, caught, down to the toe. 26 yard strike. Purdue's got timeouts left, 23 seconds remaining. Oh, and this is such great anticipation by Aiden O'Connell. the first timeout of the half. Working his eyes to the right. Timeout. He's got Jackson Anthrop underneath. And hits the seam route right behind it. Look at the anticipation that he throws that with. I mean, he threw that when the receiver was in the first window, leading him into that second window of the seam route right on the money. What an impressive game and an impressive season for Aiden O'Connell. They had a stretch in the Michigan State game where they played three different quarterbacks over a five-play span. O'Connell finally took over the position. He's announced he's returning for another season next year. And Jeff Brom's got... Great consistency in the program now. And in Hooker's fumble led to this short field for Purdue. Out of the eye formation with Dolru. Little boot and a dunk touchdown, Payne Durham. <laughs> Purdue showed big eye formation, multiple tight ends, and Aiden O'Connell said, let's get it going in Nashville. This thing wider than a Music City bachelorette party. Boy, and what? A change in momentum, right? Tennessee's got an opportunity to score before half and get it after half. Instead, the turnover, Purdue capitalizes. Now they go into halftime, most likely with the lead. Finneran sneaks it in again. Purdue with the lead, 23-21. Again, it's all about the play action, the play fake. Watch the play fake go this way. Watch all these defenders bite with it tight end leaks backside and there's nobody home i mean o'connell could have ran it could have thrown it to 87 88 i mean that was a six points all the way around there great play design by jeff brown is he raising the roof yeah we're I mean, old school there was some old school hits going at pregame we've had some crisscross going mac that'll make it 19 seconds left in the half. What a performance by the Boilermakers. They've outscored Tennessee 16 to nothing this half. Josh Heupel's offense has stalled off some incompletions by Hooker. But most damaging, the fumble. Tennessee has one timeout remaining. Tennessee just get back in the locker room now? Yeah, I think so. I mean, you're in this situation as a head coach. You don't want anything worse to happen, right? You just had a big momentum-changing turnover. So a high percentage either throw, screen, a handoff, like, hey, if someone spits through and runs for 30, 40 yards, cool. You can call a timeout and try to make something happen. But high percentage, get to the locker room, make some adjustments. You got the ball coming in the second half anyway. Well, the trans-perfect Music City Bowl giving you all the offense you would want. A 44-point first half combined. Tennessee jumped off to a quick start, led 21-7 after the first quarter. Purdue fighting back to take the lead. Some frustrations for Tennessee. 
After this break, Kevin Nagandi will take it over. That opened up some of the intermediate pass game. Bayless Jones brought it out of the end zone in a solid return. Cole, what did you learn from Josh Heupel? Yeah, following up to what Jordan just said there, he said the run game of Purdue is something we need to adjust to. We need to make sure that we slow down, do a better job against that in the second half. Also need to reroute some things on the back end. There is concern about the young corners that Tennessee's played today. He said offensively, it feels like Hendon Hooker, his quarterback, might just be rushing things a little bit. Just off his rhythm, off of his timing, want to try to get him comfortable early here in the second. Half. Yeah, what a difference. First quarter for Hendon Hooker. He was nearly perfect. Six of eight for a buck 64, two touchdowns. Just five of 11 for 27 yards and a lost fumble on a sack in the second quarter. That led to a Purdue touchdown and the Boilermaker lead. Be important to get him in rhythm here. Expect a quick, easy throw early in this drive. Taylor Graham back on the field for Purdue. Hooker has indeed complete one over the middle. That's Bayless Jones, and it goes for 13. Love the call, right? You got a quarterback that's struggling with timing a little bit. A couple errant throws. Just get him back in rhythm. Get tempo going. Get back to what you do best. And then back to the ground game, and Jabari Small takes it to the 49. Going to that slant there, too, early, Jordan. Something that if you go back and watch Purdue multiple times this year, there were a few teams that really took advantage of slants across the entire game. Small again. Huge hole opened up, and he takes it inside the 35. 19-yard rumble for the sophomore from Memphis. And how big is that? When this run game gets going, the RPO game off of that is what's really dangerous. You got a quarterback that's missed a few deep throws. Run game gets going, then those slants, those hitches, everything starts to hit. Ball start, offense, number 63. Five-yard penalty, first down. It's a center, Cooper Mays. Cole, how does a center fall start? <laughs> I never know the answer to that. <laughs> I mean, you can get up there and kind of move the ball a little bit to try to draw a guy off sides. I used to do the old head bob because I signaled, you know, I'd say like, go on shotguns. Like, go, go was our snap count. So I would always bob my head a little bit extra to try to draw guys off sides. But, I mean, the center snaps the ball. The, the play's live. Doesn't matter what everybody else does. Cooper, the younger brother of Cade, you saw on the sideline, out with an ankle injury in this one. Hooker with a slant again, and that's uh, incomplete with a flag on Marvin Grant. Why are slants pulled? more dangerous to this Purdue defense based on the film that you've watched? Well, honestly, Tom, I think they have to play off a little bit more. It's not a super athletic secondary. Defense number four. Spot foul. First down. And obviously, too, you think about what they were going into this bowl game with Carlottis at defensive end, one of the best pass rushers in college football. You probably didn't have to press a lot of teams up. You knew you were going to be able to get to the quarterback and have numbers on the back end because you didn't have to dedicate extra defenders to pressure. George Carlottis, projected first rounder. Top 10 pick opted out of this game to get ready for the NFL draft. It's going to see back to the ground game, and this time it's Jalen Wright. Freshman picks up three. I'll tell you what, if I'm upstairs for Tennessee, I love the matchup right now with Bayless Jones being covered by Jalen Graham in the slot. Jalen Graham out here, that's that Sam linebacker that's playing some nickel. That Seventh play of the drive. To the perimeter, good blocking on the end. Tennessee touchdown. 15 yards for Bayless Jones and a little shimmy at the end. Purdue earlier this game caught with only one defender on the perimeter in a similar situation. a little zone pressure. Remember talking to Brad Lambert yesterday, he said this 78 yards on 14 completions for Aiden O'Connell. Horvath again. Got him by a shoe. Who throws a shoe? Matthew Butler in on the tackle. A few Florida fans would have something to say about that. Third down three. Boilermakers only two of eight on third down in this one. Incomplete. There's a flag. It didn't come from the umpire. It came from the line judge over on the sideline. Jackson Anthro held by Jackson. Pass interference. Defense number 26. Spot foul. First down. Yeah, 
Theo Jackson, Tennessee, really their best defender, best all-around defender, working on a in-breaking slant here, and it's just the left arm right there. Just got a little bit too much of Anthrop with his left arm, turns him a hair. It's a really bang-bang play, but it's that hook that the back judge is going to see every time. And that is the third different defensive pass interference penalty on Tennessee in this game. Horvath again. Flag on the play. Movement on Purdue. Atlantic Coast Conference crew working this one. Illegal formation offense. Five players in the backfield. Penalty is declined. Second down. Second and ten. Talked to Jeff Brom at the half. He said he wasn't happy with his play calling in the red zone. How do you interpret that? Oh, I think he, he just understands that they've had opportunities and he wants to be better as far as giving his guys the best chance to put points on the board. I appreciate the coach going out and saying that. Okay, I need to be better. I need to call plays better. Don't give it a lot. Anthrop in motion. McConnell to Horvath after he played fake to him. He is rumbling down the tracks and into Tennessee territory. Man. That's like a bowling ball rolling down Broadway. A pedal tavern rolling down Broadway. So many times. Breaks? No. Those things just keep going. you got to slow your legs down. <laughs> Orbath is Tennessee's so used to seeing him blocking in those play-action passes as they take shots. That time just slipped out. Great call by Jeff Brown. Andrew that time picks up two. PFT is going to have to ask for ballots back on that low man trophy. Yeah, why are we turning him in already? There's still games to be played. Better see by five, Purdue looking to reclaim the lead. Second and eight. Low snap. O'Connell fires. Caught first down. What a grab by Garrett Miller. It goes for 26. I pulled talk to Josh Heupel at halftime about this route in particular. These seam routes, you have to be able to reroute. You can't let these tight ends and receivers run free down the middle of the field. you got to reroute them, disrupt the timing. Right now, Purdue is attacking the middle of the field, and they're untouched as they go from that really 5 to 10-yard range. Tennessee defenders have got to start getting a body on them, at least wall them. Make them change direction. Make them change speed. It's just too easy for Purdue to get access to the middle of the field. To the middle of the field. Down. Purdue thought they were going to review this. Aiden O'Connell took his helmet off and came over to the sideline. It was a quick review. O'Connell trying to steal a timeout. Now they'll have to hurry back out there. 20 seconds on the play clock. No huddle. Tennessee trying to sub a few, and now the officials will stop it. Reset the play clock. Purdue has had to settle for field goals in the red zone so far in this game. King Doro is a tailback. Doro. O'Connell gets some of that yardage back. They go down to the 10. And the completion of Brock Thompson. These are those throws the defensive coordinator Tim Banks said he wanted to take away, right? Don't give so much cushion. Don't want those easy hitches. So then what's the answer? You take away the hitches, you get burned by the seams. You take away the seams, you get burned by the hitches. That's what I was going to say. Deshaun Rucker, a true freshman, is out there in coverage. It's a give and take, right? It is loud here in Nashville. O'Connell to the O-line with the change. Third and goal. Into the end zone. Caught and dropped. I don't think he finished the catch. They rolled it a touchdown, but Sheffield lost the ball after he went across the back line. Let's see if it stands. Well, this was an absolute dime by O'Connell. 
Bayless Jones, full head of steam, looking for the sideline. He's got it. A flag will come in on holding. This will all be for not. And they'll bring this one back inside the 30. This Tennessee offense scored 21 points in the first quarter, nothing in the second. Turn every three turn, holding, receiving team. Get the distance to the goal, penalty, first down. This is one of these holds that looked like in live action it happened behind the play. Well, maybe right at it. 17 drawing attention to it. Yeah, great job selling that. Too. Yeah. Uh, just a thought. By the way, Hennon Hooker having a great start to this one. Three passing touchdowns tied for the third most for a bowl game in Tennessee history. Tyler Bray and Peyton Manning each through four. Bray against North Carolina here in this bowl in 2010. And Peyton in the Citrus in 97. That'll count as a pass. A little turn up field for Jalen Hyatt. And he blew out a flip flop. Hyatt, their speedster. Had some daylight here. He's just going to lose his footy. Tom, we were down there earlier on the field, and you notice just with every cleat and cut. Oh. Hooker loses the ball. Got pressured again, got spun around, and Tennessee lucky to recover that one. Hooker loses nine yards, but doesn't lose the football after all. That was a bad snap to begin with. It was between Hooker and Small. And that's really tough, right? The running back coming left to right, that snap going right there. Yeah, Hooker did a good job of just getting that ball and not making a bad play worse. Volunteers looking at a third and 17. Trying to set up the screen and it's too fast for Bayless Jones. It's a little too much juice. This is one of those jailbreak screens where your receiver is actually going to take a few steps towards the quarterback. It's a short throw. That ball a little high and a little too hard. And so Paxton Brooks punting from his end zone. That catches a 41 and 61. Reception since the beginning of the second quarter. This Tennessee offense has been sputtering a little bit. Got to get number four involved. He's your best player on the outside. Manned up in coverage right now. On second and ten, Tennessee's going to run it again. And a gain of four. This is a light Purdue defense given the personnel issues especially in the back end. They're actually going to get big here. But they have held their own outside of the first quarter, holding the Volunteers for just one touchdown since the opening barrage. And coverage on Tillman here. Pressure coming. Hooker. Drop by Fant. Would have been a first down. Tough catch for Fant. Just on a little hook route here. Hooker wanted to work Tillman at first, comes back to Fan on his second read. And Graham, outside linebacker, playing that nickel hybrid spot today. Jalen Graham with a great job breaking that one up. That grass, a jersey, more and more grass on it for Hendon Hooker. Yeah, that tells the story for Tennessee. Good looking punt from Paxton Brooks. Anthrop. Races out of bounds after that 43 yard punt for two on the return. Aiden O'Connell believed to be the first non scholarship starter at quarterback in Purdue football history. Has looked magnificent in this game and in the second half of the season. Yeah, he's looked anything but a walk on. Former eighth on the depth chart, fourth on the depth chart to start the season. He's been laser accurate. He's been lighting up this Tennessee defense for two and a half quarters so far. 3.55. We got a lot of ball game left. We do. 2017 a walk on. 2018 didn't play. 2019 moved from fourth on the depth chart to taking three starts. 
due to injuries and attrition, and he delivers one up the sideline. The immediacy of not having control long enough is what they were looking at there. Leaves Purdue the second and ten. Tennessee desperately in need of a stop. Volunteers bring four. O'Connell intercepted. He threw it right to Tennessee. Wow, what a turn of events, huh? A tight catch, no catch. Ruled incomplete. Next play, the quarterback who's been laser accurate all day and all night. A little late to this one. Byron Young is dropping in the flats. This ball's got to be out so much sooner than it is. I don't think you saw Young dropping. They brought the fourth rusher from the opposite side. Yep, little pressure. So you get zone pressure from the right side. That means the left end will drop off. I think he saw him, just saw him late, and didn't have enough juice and enough space. You see that little hesitation right there allowed Young to get under that outside hitch. Tennessee good field position after the takeaway. Bayless Jones shakes a man, bends it back to the inside and takes it down to the 20. Still wasn't down until the very end, rolling over the Purdue players. It's a gain of 30. Well, you feel the energy, you feel the momentum now for Tennessee. Definite Big shift. Hooker fakes outside, dips again, and picks up just two. I leave second and eight. Tennessee just hasn't put together multiple completions outside of the first quarter, doesn't feel like. No, we, we haven't seen them with the ability to string multiple tempo plays together, right? Because it's a, an eight-yard gain, then a negative play, or a five-yard gain, then an incompletion. Looking for the edge and a physical tackle up around the shoulder pads. Purdue with a late sub. Tennessee looking at a third and seven, and it'll be a check with me. Moving two receivers to the wide side of the field. That means Cedric Tillman's going to be at the bottom of your screen there. Matched up one-on-one -on -one if he wants it. Hooker looking left, steps up. Nice catch by Bayless Jones and a pass with just a hair wide, but that will leave fourth. Tennessee down two. We'll take, yeah, take the field goal. Fourteen. Plus, there's still a lot of time left in this game. We saw it's a third quarter coming bunches. So Chase McGrath, who's 11 of 14 on the season. Thirty yard attempt. Is turned into a cult hero of Purdue for a guy who came in not only unheralded, but basically unknown. Here's Anthrop. No game. Another tackle for Jeremy Banks. Banks has been all over the place. He set a new career high in tackles with 17. Came into the game with 108, third in the SEC. He's just got a nose for the ball. Great reactions, great ability to read and react. Started his career as a running back at Tennessee. O'Connell. Flag on the play. And this will be the fourth defensive pass interference against Tennessee. You see Brock Thompson, every play, he's got enough to get downfield. He barely has enough strength in those legs to then get off the field. And just then he said, I'm staying in. And he waved the second stringer out. That's at least the second time I've seen him do that. Get up a little bit hobbled. And again, I don't know. I mean, ties up the yeah, ties up the left arm a little bit right there it was interesting after the play Preston Terrell had entered tried to get Thompson out and he said no 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 you you go back to the sideline I'm staying in tenth flag against Tennessee it's cost them 92 yards O'Connell looking for the wheel route checks it down chance to run and plenty of room for Dylan Downing gain of 21 yards for Downing 
smart decision there by Aiden O'Connell. One of the wheel route downfield to Horvath. Decided to check it down instead. The play action, looking for Horvath again. And incomplete. Big hit from Trayvon Flowers on Garrett Miller. I'll tell you what, they like something there with that wheel route. It's the same exact concept. Done a little different. This time the check down was a tight end coming from the backside, but still a wheel route on the front side. Or front side of the passing concept, I should say, at least for Horbach. And are they looking for the wheel or for the matchup of the lineback? They're looking for the wheel because Jeremy Banks is scraping with those running backs out of the backfield. He, you mentioned he's been all over the place, but... He's probably a little worn out as well. They're trying to capitalize on that, but he's been in coverage each time. He drops here. O'Connell steps up, throws on the run, intercepted again. Nobody there but Trayvon Flowers. Third interception for Tennessee tonight. decision here. Quarterbacks are always told, don't make a bad play worse. It's going to be under pressure. Step up in the pocket. Find your check down or just tuck in and get as much as you can. And tries to hit a crossing route really late right here, but pressure in his face causes that ball to sail and right into the arms of Flowers. Only five interceptions on the season for Tennessee coming into this game. Three of them against the most accurate passer in the Big Ten. For less than three quarters in this one. Here's Jabari Small. Picks up a yard. Lawrence Jefferson is not getting up. And Small is late to get to his feet. Remember this Purdue defensive line already a couple men short. Carl Loftus opted out of this game. Branson Dean, health and safety protocols, got that result last night. And now Lawrence Johnson, junior from Fort Wayne, Indiana, getting looked at by the athletic training staff. And Tennessee really thin at running back as well with Jabari Small limping off there. Jalen Wright, the freshman who's been banged up most of the year. He's played a little bit this game, but gets pretty thin after that. It's been an up-and-down game for Hendon Hooker. 253 yards and three touchdowns. But after a quick start to this game, Hooker Lewin, consistency, inconsistent. The velocity is still there, but so a lot of his passes have just been simply off target. Yeah, a little high, maybe not spinning it quite as tight. I mean, as he's used to, which affects the accuracy as well. I tell you what, he, he's ran the football physically tonight, and I've pointed out a few times that the chalk, the grass stains on his jersey. I tell you what, my, my junior year in college, I ran a ton. And there'd be certain drives where you just take a hit on the shoulder, and it's not that it was incapacitated, but it's just not a funny bone film but a little dead yeah right and just didn't quite have the reaction that you're used to and it take a drive to kind of shake it off so not saying that's necessarily what's happening but, but by the looks of his jersey wouldn't be surprised if that was part of the issue hooker was a starter at virginia tech got up to a great start there six and oh which is the third longest streak since michael Vick. didn't know if he'd keep playing football though after irregular irregularities were discovered during a COVID screening, he had to go through a heart scope before the 20 season. Made his impact on the Tennessee program this year, and he completes the first down on the perimeter to Javante Payton. There's a really confident throw on that one. Spun the ball. It was accurate. Hooker, time running out, he'll take off himself. 
And he picks up five. A little stutter step before. He got brought down by Jalen Alexander. Credit to these Purdue corners. Jamari Brown been matched up on Cedric Tillman most of the night here at the bottom of your screen. He's been physical, making it tough on these receivers on the outside. And it should be noted that Jamari Brown was questionable to even play in this game. He's been dealing with some health issues. Gave it a go early and is good. Third and one now. Purdue trying to get set. And Hooker will slow him down. Any time on the play clock. Hooker hands it off. They got a first down run. It's Jalen Wright. Small still has it returned after taking that shot earlier in the drive. It's left in the quarter. A lot of times after a timeout, injury timeout or not, those receivers on the outside have had a chance to catch their breath in a tempo offense. A lot of times that's when you'll see them take a shot downfield. Fresh legs. See if he can get by somebody downfield. Hooker. Footing is really bad. You can see he tried to turn on the Jets as he cut up field and he wasn't sure of it. Turns into a seven yard gain. Yeah, especially in the middle of the field there. That's where this turf gets most precarious. It's just tough to cut. It's Grass damn. is coming up. Yeah. We head to the fourth quarter. The Transperfect Music City Bowl is a thriller. Tennessee 31, Purdue 30. Back to Nashville after this. Got those roadrunner feet going a little early. How's it change of play calling in the second down? play right there they're actually going to dial up a little quarterback draw so again second down I still feel like you can hand the ball run it if you need to hooker dances looking for deep man and ends up spinning his way for a gain of seven they're looking to get it to Tillman but he was well covered yeah a little RPO there right so you, you got to throw it if you're going to ride it and and pull it out you got to let that ball go you didn't make the right decision there when you're not throwing it. You only have one route there. Tuck it, run, get as much as you can. This is going to leave uh, the extra push at the line. It will be a Tennessee first down. The extra effort, the footing has been uh, a little slippery out there, Cole. Let's just give you guys an idea. It almost feels like there's just like a little layer of dew that has set in over on the grass. So I just got a little paper towel here, but just kind of, you know, if you were to get some weight down on there, and then you just see right away. That's great absorbency. You're, you are the quicker picker-upper. It's not necessarily the quicker picker-upper, but um, it gives you an idea just sort of how wet that grass is there, just putting your hand down real quick. Can you picture Cole in a flannel jacket and getting real the mustache? Brawny. Yeah. Hooker fell. There it is. A bad footing, but he still completes it to the outside. And a Tennessee first down. The plain leg, plain foot just came out. That steps to throw here, and it comes right out from under him. First down. Yeah, look at that. Uh, not sure how he was able to still throw that ball accurately. Tennessee was trying to go tempo. Lawrence Johnson laying down. And that'll stop the Tennessee offense from getting back on the line. A long time between plays, between the injury to Johnson and the review. Second and ten. That's caught by Bayless Jones Jr. And he picks up six. Early in the fourth quarter, Tennessee holding on to a 31-30 lead. It's be the tenth play of the drive. Remember, talked about this earlier. This is where Alex Golis said, it's about the time you got to finish the drive when the O-line has been out there for so long. Nobody deep for Purdue. Here comes pressure. Hooker, pocket holds, delivers a strike for a first down. And it's Tillman who has reappeared for a gain of 10. It's good to see their best player has been pretty quiet since the beginning of the second quarter, getting him back involved. Hooker looking right, dancing left, and he kind of falls forward for two. The Tennessee runs at such a tempo 
that Hooker will often only look to one side of the field, and the advantage of that is that the receivers on the opposite side won't run routes at all. Trying to save their legs. Issue for Purdue again. Got to work out a cramp on the right calf. Yeah, you mentioned it. A lot of half field reads for Tennessee. A lot of times the backside. Eight this one. Second and eight. They'll run it with Jabari Small. Cole, how do you think the field conditions impact play calling at this point? I think it, it affects play calling greatly. I think if you have receivers that are usually going to have like a double move, you might want to call that right now. Anything that's going to call for east-west change of direction, I would almost remove that right now. Pressure coming again and complete. The Bayless Jones, but he's just short. That'll leave fourth and one. What do you do here, Tennessee? Going to keep the, the offense on the field. Yep. Yeah, keep the tempo, get the element of surprise. Purdue is not lined up. Snap it as quick as possible. Field goal would give them a four-point advantage. Instead, they'll run it needing one. Hooker stops short. Huge stop for Purdue. And they get the ball back. It's been an up-and-down game for Aiden O'Connell. He's the first Boilermaker to throw three passing touchdowns and three picks in a ball game since Drew Brees in 1998 at the Alamo Bowl. And now Tennessee player is down. This is Kamal Haddon, who has one of UT's three picks tonight. Purdue will be looking at a second of full at Purdue. 463 yards of offense. He's thrown for 376. A reverse action on the end around trying to get upfield and not much going for Deion Burks. It's great discipline backside. There's Tennessee linebackers and D line. You see them working back across the face. Side coming the whole way. Byron Young finishing it off. Third and seven. Sold out crowd at Nissan Stadium. Pressure coming from Tennessee. Delivered on time. First down for Brock Thompson, who picks up nine. That's a mesh concept. You got crossers, two coming from the right side, one coming from the left. Getting some traffic in the way. But man, every time Brock Thompson catches the football, he's in pain getting up. But he's made some huge plays tonight for Purdue. Cole, what do you think of Purdue's O-line tonight? They've been fantastic. You think about the fact that you've swapped your right tackle, Eric Miller, over to the left side, and you've still been able to hold up as well as you have? Pretty impressive. Abel Connell time on that blitz pickup. And now Doru muscles his way for a gain of six. Cam Craig has filled in a little bit of tackle. My main Musa has filled in a little bit. Played three tackles in this game. And Tennessee has not been able to consistently affect Aiden O'Connell in the pocket. from the edge. Gain of only one that time. And at Tennessee will have Caleb Tremblay go down. USC transfer out of Napa, California. We talked about this earlier in the season. This looks more like a knee issue, but a lot of folks on chilly nights. This one, almost an identical situation. Banks going to show blitz. He's going to drop back into the passing lane. Remember the interception O'Connell threw 
to Young, to Byron Young. When they yep. brought pressure, he dropped off. Sometimes it's tough as a quarterback. Those linebackers are in the box. Sometimes you just forget about him for a second. And Banks almost with a huge play, but either way, a big stop on third down. Banks, 18 tackles, a sack, two passes broken up. Purdue will punt it. Near midfield with 9-11 to go. No return for Tennessee. The Boilermakers now need their defense to come up with a big stop. Tennessee will be backed up inside the 10. Bamford. All season continues. Blitnikoff award winner Jordan Addison. Number 12, Pitt. Number 10, Michigan State. The 53rd annual Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. Our coverage starts at 7 Eastern. Pickup of six. From Hooker. Second down now. No-brainer for Purdue to punt it with nine minutes left down by one. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I mean Tennessee had a huge first half, and they've made some big plays, but they, they haven't been super consistent, so you're betting on your defense to be able to come up with a stop. Hooker pulls it back. Now we'll try to take off, and they get him by a shoelace to gain only one. Again, a, a tall task because Tennessee's just got so many ways that they can hurt you. The run game's starting to get going. Hooker's ability to extend plays. Not a big gain there, but a play that could have been a sack to then at least a positive play. Here's Jabari Small. Ooh, nice. Picks up six. I saw him go out of the game earlier, a little banged up. He looks good. So a pop at the end of that run. Talking to Lance Golish about substitution patterns. Maybe another bowler maker will stop the clock. And he said, with our running backs. Straight ahead. And a first down run by Small. Went right into Karen Douglas. Purdue's middle linebacker. 720 and rolling. Straight ahead, Small again. And another Tennessee first down and a gain of 13. Back-to-back -back plays. You've seen the insert from tight end 88, Princeton Fent. Excellent job just being physical at the point of attack. And they run it again. Same play going tempo there, 88 leading the way inside. Why is it an advantage to bring a guy like Fent in there? Well, first off, he's multiple. I mean, you see physicality that he can offer in between the tackles, and we saw play action earlier for Tennessee where they ran that insert, and then he just slips in behind the second level of the defense. Second and eight. Ball got loose in the mesh. Hooker recovers, wants to throw, instead will scramble, and he gets popped before I could get back to the line of scrimmage. A play that all of the signal callers on Tennessee's sideline, the GAs, the offensive GAs were hollering and yelling and motioning back to the line, back to the line. Let's go, go, go. There's so much strategy involved in that, Tom. And in talking to Glenn Elvey, the offensive line coach, before the game, he said, you know, deep passes, we always, as offensive linemen, you want to track the ball, track the passes. But if it's outside the numbers, we teach them to track down the hash because obviously that's where the ball is going to be spotted. Sometimes certain screen plays that Tennessee runs, they'll teach their offensive linemen not to come out as much as traditionally you would. They want them to get north and south just because they're going to be closer to where the ball may be respotted. All of that has to do with speed, tempo, getting realigned. And it goes against a lot of traditional football. It really does. Josh Heupel, originally traditional football player, old school, dad, high school and college coach, so old school and so dedicated to football. When he gave his kindergarten teacher a Christmas gift, he gave her a Minnesota Vikings helmet. Has she had enough apples? Third down nine. Hooker. Lobs it down the middle of the field, incomplete. Trying to find Jalen Hyatt. And that'll bring on the punt team for Tennessee with 6.08 left. Wow, pressure in and around Hendon Hooker here. He's got Jalen Hyatt wide open. Downfield. 
Yeah, you can tell. I don't know if elbow got hit. That ball came out funky. And what, boy, surely could have been a touchdown if that's an accurate throw. Paxton Brooks gets it away clean. And it takes a Tennessee hot. Aiden O'Connell incomplete. And there's a flag. That is the fifth defensive pass interference penalty against Tennessee, the third this quarter. That's Theo Jackson working on the outside. Pardon me, that's the Theo third on Burrell. Yeah, Burrell. Theo there coming into the screen. Pass interference late. defense. Spot foul. First down. Pass first offense. Has Aiden O'Connell seeking to become the third Purdue player in the last 25 seasons to throw for over 400 in a ball game. He's at 385 now. Curtis Painter did it against Central Michigan in 07. Kyle Orton against Washington State in the Sun Bowl in 2001. And look, it, it, it's been a physical night on the outside for these Tennessee DBs, but that's what Tim Banks asked them to do. He said, I want to be physical at the point of attack. I want to take away those dink and dunks. You're going to get a few calls like that when you play physical. Down the sideline again, and flag again. That's exactly what you're talking about. Defense, number four, third first down. He's in phase here. But I don't agree with that one. I mean, there's as much contact initiated by the receiver there. Burrell's trying to turn and find the ball. I think that's just a physical play on the outside. I think that that, that should be a no call, in my opinion, there. I think Josh Heupel knew it. He was going at the official while the ball was still in the air. He saw it happen. It's the fourth P.I. on Burrell in this game, the sixth on Tennessee. They do have three interceptions. O'Connell to the outside and a slip. On this wet track, Colin O'Sullivan. Ball came out after he was down. The roll on the field, completed catch. The receiver was down, stuck it down. Second and six for Aiden O'Connell at Purdue. Pressure coming. O'Connell spikes it at the feet of Horvath. Scooped up by Tennessee. Did it hit somebody's foot? I don't know why that wasn't whistled dead. The ruling on the field, the quarterback threw the ball forward. Number 40 is in the area. Incomplete pass. Third down. Over the middle. Caught by the tight end. Payne Durham into Tennessee territory. couldn't get the 255 pounder down did he stay in bounds all the way down the sideline look at the anticipation throwing before his tight end is in that second window and here this is just a lapse of concentration by Tennessee not finishing the play there what a play by Payne Durham this game is off the rails Purdue going to go for two. They haven't converted one since 2019 in the old Oaken bucket against Indiana. 0 for 1 in two-point conversions this year. This will make it a seven-point lead should they convert it. This might be where they get tricky, by the way. Imagine what behind the rails is going to say. <laughs> Best podcast Purdue history. Here's Durham in motion. McConnell's got time. Right back to 87. The 
position at the 35. The, the touchdown, such a key play in this game, not only to grab the lead, but it came on third and six after Tennessee had pressured Okama on the previous two plays. Yeah, pressured and got home up to play zone coverage on that one. I mean, it's such a double-edged sword, right? Every time Tim Banks has pressured and been physical, they've gotten some interesting pass interference calls on the outside. So you go to play zone coverage, be safe, keep everything in front of you. And O'Connell and his tight end, Payne Durham, just on the exact same page for a huge play. Tight ends have not had a lot of success against this Tennessee defense this year. Cam Latu, 3 of 55. Jaheim Bell, 4 of 43. Mm. Scoreless last two drives for Tennessee. Here's a big run up the middle. Jabari Smith, the final race flies. It's small in a foot race. Finally shoved out of bounds inside the 10. 69 yards. The bachelorette parties on lower Broadway aren't having this much fun tonight. It ain't closing time yet. Broadway's open late, baby. Back to the ground game. It's Hooker. And that'll set up second and goal. This is where Tennessee's going to keep this tempo on, not allow Purdue to get their big bodies in the game. Small, ridden down from behind. Third and goal coming up. Zone read, zone read. To do a little keeper using the end and hooker's legs. Right, the running back bounces to the outside. Flag on the play, and he's in. If the play stands, Tennessee an extra point away from a tie, but this one looks like it's coming Over. back. Offense, number 76. 10 yard penalty, third down. Tez Spragans, I think is who they got it on right here. Right guard running in his direction. That just ducks his head at, at the initiation of contact and hooks him with that right arm. So not only did you take seven off the board, but now you're third and goal from the 13, 14. I think you got two downs here, so I don't think you have to get a touchdown. Buster hit as he throws. Incomplete. And that'll bring up fourth and goal. This Purdue secondary decimated by injuries coming into this one. They stand tall here. Brad Lambert brings zero blitz. All out Brits are going to bring one more than Tennessee can block. That ball out a little earlier than Hooker would have liked. Did a great job of throwing accurately, but great coverage to break it up on the back end. Cam Allen on the back end. Tennessee going for it. Fourth and goal. Movement. Hooker. Fade. End zone. Incomplete. Tennessee got a free play out of it. No contact on the outside. The refs give the signal. Yeah, we got two flags now. Great point. Uncatchable, though, that one ref down the sideline was saying that ball was too high. Definitely an offsides. Let's see what they say about the third two fouls on the play, one by each team. Offside defense number 15. Illegal motion offense number oh. 20. Penalty for offset, fourth down. So the replay fourth down. Love the thought process, right? You get a free play, throw it up to your jump ball guy. A little contact, but that was uncatchable per the ref there. Offsetting penalties, we do it again. Cover zero. No safeties deep. They're going to bring pressure, or will they drop off? These guys in here are either going to come, or they're going to bounce out and try to stop short throws. Both teams checking. They bring it. Hooker, one-on-one -on -one coverage. Caught! Touchdown, Tennessee! Cedric Tillman with his third touchdown catch of the game. Protect the football. That's what I tell 
Aiden O'Connell right now. Anthony motions out. They'll run it with Horvath. Horvath, the former walk-on, as is O'Connell. If you joined us late, Aiden O'Connell, when he first got to Purdue as a walk-on, was the eighth quarterback out of a nine-quarterback depth chart. He couldn't even make the scout team as a QB. He was running as a wide receiver. He has developed into the most efficient passer in the Big Ten. Pressure coming from the safety. Incomplete, knocked away. It'll leave third and five. Jackson with the hit. Such a good play by Jackson. A little late zone blitz there. Jackson's rolling down from the safety position. Playing nickel safety right there with zone blitz in front of him. Great job getting his left hand in there. Set up a third and medium here. Snap, O'Connell fires, sideline, caught! It's Brock Thompson again, and he will rumble all the way down to the sideline for a 70-yard touchdown! Brock Thompson may not be able to walk, but he can run. Multiple knee surgeries coming after the season. He's got 217 yards and two touchdowns tonight. You're Warren Burrell on the outside. You've been called how many times for pass interference for being physical as the ball arrived? Four times. So yeah, you try to let go at the end there. He stumbles as the ball is coming up. A great, accurate throw by O'Connell. Great catch by Thompson. Benneran puts it through. It's Purdue back in front, 45 to 38. Aiden O'Connell is second. Curtis Painter in a little Caesars Bowl in 07 in passing yards for a Purdue quarterback in a bowl game. Tom Hart, Jordan Rogers, Coach Hubler down on the sideline. I, I don't know if you can say enough about Aiden O'Connell, his career, where he is, and how he's played in this game tonight. Yeah, the path to get to this point, to get his team to this point, but even more so the adversity that he's faced in game. Yeah, five touchdowns, but three interceptions. I mean, he has had a short memory he's come back he continues to push the ball downfield and tell you what we got two minutes and 57 seconds left buckle up we got a whole lot more ball game left yeah we might be here a little later than imagined but Tennessee has played in overtime in this ball game by the way against North Carolina years ago with Derek Dooley did not end well but it ended on a buzzer beater and it feels like this one's coming down to the wire too squib kick and it's finally picked up by Velas Jones Brock Thompson has touchdown catches of 75 yards and 70 yards. The defender slips. The field conditions, Cole, have been an issue all night. It feels like it's just getting even slicker out there. No, I, I agree. I think it's just there was a little bit of moisture in there. It's been overcast most of the day. The weather has cooled off a lot. And as I showed you guys a little bit earlier, there just seems to be sort of a sheet of dew over the grass. And it's been an issue for a lot of players on both sides of the ball for both teams. First and 10, Tennessee. Here's Jabari Small. You know, when we met with Jeff Brom yesterday, we asked him about his uh, famous, infamous, however you want to view it, XFL interview. He did tail end of his career, and he delivered a great line. Do I or do, not, do I not have a pulse? I do. Let's play football. That fits this game tonight. Kind of fits his team this year, too. Booker fires complete. Pass midfield. drunk right now Tom it's more drunk than a bachelorette party down in front of the stage at Honky Tonk Central I don't know what's going on here's Jabari Small what is happening I have no I have no idea 
Walker's thrown for 363 in this one. One forty three and counting Purdue still has three timeouts hooker and pressure lobs it caught touchdown Tennessee incomplete off the hands of college Sullivan and this is where sure in the break Jeff Brom told his quarterback don't press all right we got three timeouts minute 30 we want to end this with the ball end it with the kick whether that's an extra point whether that's a field goal don't force the ball in the double coverage or a situation play within the offense O'Connell gets rid of it to the tight end Payne Durham he's taken that up for pickup of six Great example there, right? You got seams going intermediate. Defense gets a little soft. Just check it down. Get yourself in a better third down situation. But now a monster third down with a minute nine and ticking. Third down four. One minute to play. O'Connell incomplete. Trying to lead Sullivan. Fourth and four, and Purdue will punt it away with 56 seconds remaining. Now a little late pressure here by Tennessee. I don't think it even would have had a chance to get there with the ball coming out quick. Just read that slant the entire way. Pressure speeds up O'Connell just a little bit. Tennessee has had some quick scoring drives in this game with their up-tempo offense. They'll get a chance for another. Knuckleball, Bayless Jones lets it drop and now grabs it. Nothing but black jerseys in front of him. And he gets horse collared at the 25. That will give Tennessee some more yardage after he lost eight on the return. Last second instructions for Hayden Hooker. Pardon me, Hendon Hooker with Tennessee and Purdue tied at 45. Going to return, personal foul, horse collar tackle, kicking two. 15 yard penalty, touchdown. Just a huge mistake here. Number 42, horse collar tackle, Purdue. Hands just got to be up around that nameplate. Hendon Hooker's five passing touchdowns, the most by a Tennessee quarterback since Tyler Bray threw five against Troy in 2012. This is where, if you're Purdue, you really miss George Karloftis, your best pass rusher in situations where you want to play coverage, but you still need to get some pressure on the quarterback. See how they manufacture some pressure. Tennessee will run it. Jabari Small. Slips. He had a 60-yarder earlier in this quarter. That's eight. Clock running. 31-30. Here's Small again. First down will stop the clock momentarily. Tennessee has all three timeouts remaining. I got to use one. Sure. Uh, Purdue players down and will stay down. Tennessee can save a timeout. It's Jalen Alexander playing in his final game as a Boilermaker. Headed off to the NFL. He's been battling a groin injury all night. And what a huge advantage that will be for Tennessee. The ability to stop the clock three more times. Especially if they try. It's either going to be a overtime After or a Tennessee review, The rolling on the field stands as challenge. Matthew Solansky, the long snapper, and the punter Paxton Brooks is the holder. Chase McGrath for 56 to end this wild night in Nashville.
Got it away. Clean. Does not have the leg. We're headed to overtime, but to your point, Purdue with a man. Interesting to see where the play calling goes for both offenses. Third and a short two. Bottled up. Tried to bounce. It won't happen. And Purdue with a huge stop on third down. It's a loss of one. Jalen Graham late to his feet. And it brings up fourth down for Tennessee. Hooker ran for a first down last time they faced a fourth. I'll tell you what, I really thought we would see Jabari Small in this situation, right? Jabari has run so hard. That time, Kieran Douglas met Jalen Wright right in the hole. Be a 34-yard field goal. You surprised you're not kicking it? I'm surprised of nothing tonight. <laughs> it's fair. They need two to keep the drive alive. Hooker looking to throw. Pressure. Escapes. Tries to turn it upfield. And he dances to a Tennessee first down. Little surprise they went for it on fourth down. Little surprise they throw the football. Not surprise. Hendon Hooker makes a play. Possession stays alive for Tennessee. And now straight ahead with Jalen Wright. A 12-yard run. That'll set up first and goal. Jalen Graham trying to tough it out for Purdue, but he's got an obvious shoulder issue. You saw him come in. Couldn't even wrap up on that tackle. Tennessee is going with some tempo here. This will be the 100th play of the game for Tennessee. Graham's right there off the edge. Hooker looking. Scramble. Take it down. What a burst up the middle by Jack Sullivan. It's a loss of seven. Just great effort by Sullivan there. Starting in George Kalapas' spot, opted out to get ready for the draft. A top ten pick. Second and goal. Tennessee straight ahead. Big hit at the three. And that'll set up third and goal. By Tennessee, I run it back really quickly. Right after that play, the previous play, Jack Sullivan was tapping his helmet like, I'm tired. These D linemen are hands on hips right now. Jordan, every player on this field's tired right now. I'm sitting here watching everybody. They're all gassed. They're, everybody's got hands on hips. Everybody's face mask is against the V of their neck. Which is why Tennessee not going tempo here. They're, they need a breather as much as, if not more than Purdue does right now, as Purdue was able to substitute a fresh D-line in there. Two tight ends in for Tennessee. Third and goal. Straight ahead again. And short. Down to the one. Really haven't seen Hendon Hooker read that at all tonight. Not really a true zone read where he's got the opportunity to keep it. All right, you got chip shot field goal or go ahead by six. And Tennessee is going to keep the offense on the field. Already converted one fourth down this overtime possession. Yeah, you made that decision on the first fourth down. Bonus bigs coming in. Yeah, they're getting really big, including Amari Thomas, D lineman number 21. Loaded backfield with Jalen Wright behind the big fellas. Wright, hit, shoves, drives, stop, reaches, and they say he is short of the goal line and a turnover on downs for the third time tonight. Really on the field, the runners, four goal drivers to stop. Soon in the goal line. First down for Duke. Great effort by Jalen Wright. He kept driving his legs. Right here, look at this. Just keeps driving his legs. He's not down. He's on a Purdue body, and there's a reach. The second question to this replay yeah. will be, was there a whistle before the ball crossed the goal line? Try to listen.
the goal line and made that whole thing possible. He was never on the ground. He was on a Purdue player. Josh Heupel goes for it on fourth down the second time in this first overtime period. And by our look, it looks like six. I'm reading lips right now. He said they said his forward progress had stopped. That's why Josh Heupel is having that reaction. That's what the ref is telling Heupel. But we're looking at the replay and looking endlessly. You can't replay after the whistle at the point after the whistle. Right. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. First down for the wow. Purdue fans go. Here's Horvath. Pardon me, O'Connell's got it. A boat. And he somehow fits it into his tight end. Payne Durham had a 62-yard rumble earlier in the fourth quarter. High priority to protect the football here if you're Purdue. A field goal wins this. Second and three. Their kicker, Mitchell Finneran, is three for three in this game. Low snap. Horvath, the fullback. Keeping in the middle of the field, no gain. They'll bring up third down. Be a 36 yard attempt from here. Finnard's already made from 35. Makes from 24, 35, and 29. We're about to again keeping in the middle of the field. We've had communication with the replay booth. What we're told from the booth going back to that Tennessee would be touchdown is that the whistle is irrelevant when the official on that side had already ruled that four progress had been stopped. Yeah. So it's not the timing necessarily of the whistle. It's the timing of when that ref determines it and then yeah. blows the whistle. And that's the arbitrary point that you can't review. And here we go. Game-winning attempt for Mitchell Fennery. Transfer from Sanford. This will be a 38-yarder. Timeout, Tennessee. His long this season is 48. The overtime period. 30-second timeout. Here's another look at the Tennessee fourth down play and Jalen Wright. Another thing to consider is was his shin down. Try to look at that left leg. I don't have him down at all. But ruled that his forward progress had been stopped prior to the ball breaking the play. Right. We Josh listen to it. it. I think he's got the same reaction that we do. Yeah, we listen to it. Look, the whistle occurs after the ball crosses, but again, that's that's arbitrary because the way the rules are written, it's when the ref determines it, and whatever that small amount of time before the whistle was blown, can't review. So here's the game. Game-winning attempt for Mitchell Finneran. The Purdue's ninth win of the season. 